Hello, my Soccer Universe. The schedule didn't look like much, but we had quite the talking points in Serie A this weekend, extended even over to Monday. The big one, of course, is Atalanta going to Napoli, beating them 3-0 at Gasparini Masterclass. And if you look at what Atalanta has achieved this year already, I mean, they beat a Bayer Leverkusen team that was flying in the Europa League final to get their win. It was a similar thing now against Countess Napoli. They already were better against Arsenal, our group should have gotten wins. I mean, they should have performed in the Champions League much better. And they also ousted Liverpool. I guess the only two teams that really gave Atalanta trouble <laughs> this year were uh, Juventus and Allegri in the Italian Cup final when they were putting all their eggs into the Europa League basket. And of course, they still cannot beat Inter. But other than that, Gasparini doing really great things. And of course, we have to talk about the title conversation now. Is Atalanta good enough? Well, if it remains a tight league, Potentially Atalanta could win it, but I fear that overall their squad is a little bit too thin. And the other thing that I hear very often is, why is nobody talking about Gasparini when a top job is opening up? I guess, first of all, he doesn't speak anything but Italian. Second of all, he's quite a prickly character and he's very well situated at Atalanta. That might be the things that prevent him from being called up for bigger jobs, maybe. Just maybe an Italian national team could work for him in his old age. But I even don't think that. I think he will retire at Atalanta and maybe put gets another trophy to La Dea. We also have to talk a little bit about Napoli. You know, they have one midweek where they do relatively well at Milan and then they lose at home to Atalanta. This is Conte. Conte only can have one good game, as that might be enough for Napoli to still pick up the title. We also had the big saga around Rafa Leao now hitting really boiling point. Seemingly he wants a change, but honestly, I actually support Fonseca in this regard because Rafa Leao has not shown a whole lot. A. B. The other thing is, if you want to build a team, I think Fonseca wants a team where everyone is running. Rafa is not running. And I love the talent and he has been a high point for Milan for many years. But I have to say the last two, three seasons, we're getting too little Leao. And now if he's playing the spoiled child... I actually wouldn't be averse to transferring him, let's say, over to PSG, where he would fit perfectly. Although I'm not sure with Luis Enrique, or, you know, get him to Real Madrid or any other team outside of Italy. I don't want him to stay in Italy. That much is for certain. But yeah, those are kind of the storylines that I get. And I have not even mentioned that you were for once managed to keep a clean sheet. But, you know, let's talk about all these games in a little review of Match Day 11. The Serie A Saturday saw Bologna get the third win of the season thanks to a late Orsolini goal in the 85th minute against a Lecce team that is rather looking at relegation. And for a change, Juve can also keep a clean sheet. They win 2 0 at Udinese with both goals coming in the first half. First an own goal by Okoye and then Savona in the 37th minute adds a second one after a rough period in terms of defense. For Juve, this actually looked a whole lot better. And then in the evening, Milan got a super lucky 1 0 win at Mon well, if you look at the overall sets, maybe in the end the win was deserved. However, how they survived the first few minutes is still beyond me. Motor scored already in the 8th minute a goal that was then called back because of a foul in the build-up play. It was a really, really weird call by the referee because either you whistle the play dead right at the foul, don't wait for the ball to go into the net. Then Daniel Maldini fails to hit from point-blank range the open net and then a little bit later on with a really brilliant attacking move only hits the post. So huge luck for Milan. In the end, they take the lead just before halftime when a Morata header is deflected onto Reinders who then heads it in after Milan got a little bit better into the play. Crucially also there was again no Rafa Leao the starting trident if you would like was Okafor, Morata and Chukwese. However for all the troubles that Milan had I've actually felt in the second half they were way more comfortable in the game and created more chances however did not take that one and especially when Rafa Leao came on on a tired defense defense of Monza, that seemed to be the game changer, similar to Loftus-Cheek. There were a few situations where you thought they're gonna run through to goal, they just did not score the goal. Most notably one where Rafa Leao goes to two defenders, plows through, brilliant stuff, and then his finish, yeah, is unfortunately thwarted. In the end, it's three much needed points for Milan. However, whether this will calm the storm around the squad, that remains to be seen. Still, you know, I'll take the three points and let's see where the season will go. <music> 
Sunday's top clash between Napoli and Atalanta can only be described as a Gasparini masterclass. He took out Retegi, played a false nine and this completely confused Napoli. Yes, Napoli had an early chance but then it's De Ketelare who assists Lukman for the first goal in the 10th minute and Van McTominay then immediately answers with hitting the post with a wide range shot. Napoli were toothless, passive. You didn't really know what's happening and after the game against Milan, you, everyone was lauding Napoli is gonna win this uh, Scudetto. Well, Gasparini showed them, no, you're not there quite yet and the passiveness of Napoli was really exemplified in the second goal when the Ketelar takes a run plays over to Lukman there are six Napoli players around them only two attackers Lukman takes a shot and yes Mere probably can do better on that one and it's 2-0 for Atalanta fully deserve it so Gasparini outfoxing Conte along the way second half Napoli was a little bit better in the game but didn't really produce much and then he brings on Retegi who scores in stoppage time a brilliant striker's goal to give Atalanta a very decisive 3 nil win. In a relatively tight game, Fiorentina get their next win of the season. Now they get on a roll and they're already moving up in the table. Moise Ken catches out the Torino defense for the winner after Ranieri assist in the 41st minute. The unrest around Roma surely did not cease after losing 3-2 at Elas Verona, managing twice to come back through Sule and Artem Dovbik. However, after the first goal, Magnani quickly establishes the lead for Verona and then later on Harawi gets another win. Another big one for Verona, who might be just good enough to survive this season. And personally, I didn't expect much from Inter playing against Venezia, except a huge win by Inter. Well, this was a really close game, actually quite a good game to watch, because there were chances on both sides. In the second half, it seemed to take a swing towards Inter, especially when Mkhitaryan opens the scoring, was called back for an offside. But then Lautaro Martinez gets into the lead after a great cross, typical cross by Di Marco. However, there were also a few good saves that someone needed to make, and then you thought that Venezia had snatched an equalizer in deep in stoppage time only for there being a handball and that ended the game. Yes, I would have loved this score to stand, however by the rules you need to go off. Venezia would have deserved that point though, I gotta say. In the early Monday kickoffs we saw two 1-0 wins, the first one for Empoli over Como with Pellegri, Pietro Pellegri scoring, yes! He seems to be kind of back. Let's see, maybe he can continue his form. And then in the other game, Genoa get a 1-0 win at Parma with Pinamonti getting the win in the 79th minute. And I expected goals between Lazio and Cagliari and it seemed to be early going well. After a free kick is badly parried, Bulletia in the second minute taps it home for Lazio. However, Cagliari were quite well in the game and get an equalizer through Luwumbo in the 41st minute. Seemingly they're hanging on. Yes, Lazio having more of the game and then it all all falls apart for Cagliari in short succession. Sakani comes on with 73rd minute, then a penalty is given for Lazio, pretty clear one for that. Sakani converts and Lazio are up again. And then Yerimina commits a foul on the midway point. Not sure if it was really a foul, to be honest. He's getting his second yellow card. is sent off and Adopo is so irate with that one. He also gets his second yellow card. So within 10 seconds, two red cards for Cagliari. And still, they had a chance for an equalizer. I actually thought that Lazio will run away with it, but it's a very hard worked 2-1 win for Lazio. So after match 11, we have quite a tight league. We have Napoli now leading only by a point against Inter. That's really, really tight. And they will be playing each other on the next weekend. So that's quite exciting. Atalanta sitting there behind as well. Three points behind Napoli. And up until Juve. Juve is only sitting at 21 points, so we have actually the top six teams within four points of each other. That makes for a really tight league. Add to it that Milan have a game in hand against Bologna, which would put them at 20. They could be up there. However, Bologna have been picking up points as of late, so I actually think it's not a foregone conclusion that Milan will get these three points. And Milan is actually the leading pack in the teams that will chase for European spots. I don't see Milan necessarily in the title conversation, but I think they should get a Champions League spot if they can get all their squad internal problems sorted. But at the moment, Milan is leading the second pack between 7th and 13th spot, where we also have six teams within five points. And then 
is the relegation pack. I would say Elas Verona is good enough to avoid relegation, although it might take them a longer while. But starting with Parma, we are really in relegation picture. We have here seven teams within a point of each other. So you win, you're getting out of it. You lose, you're staying stuck down there. Things not looking good, I would say, for Cagliari, Venezia and, of course, Lecce as well. But, you know, if you get a run going, you can actually lift yourself out of this troubled zone. The next round gives us two Serie A classic. First off, we have the Derby della Mole, the most one-sided derby. For once, I would like to see Torino get something of Juve. It ain't gonna happen. I can tell you as much. Juventus is gonna win this one. But it is a derby nonetheless. We have, of course, then Inter against Napoli. This is 2v1 with only a point between them. Given that Inter also play Arsenal in the midweek in the Champions League. Yeah, I see a draw there again. But hey. It's Conte coming back to Inter where he won a title with Lukaku. I think there's quite some stuff there. Don't sleep on Fiorentina against Elas Verona. Roma hosting Bologna. Roma is such a mess. We have not even mentioned it because it is just such a match. I keep mentioning it all the time. Let's not talk too much about it, to be honest. And then Milan have to go to Cagliari. A game that they usually win. But yeah, I'm not trusting Milan at this very moment. So, ahead of a big week for the Italian teams in the Champions League, as I said, Inter have to play Arsenal, but Milan have to go to Real Madrid. Not looking forward to that one, to be honest, especially with Real Madrid not having played on the weekend either. But hey, it's at least some marquee matchups, but I think it's on the other teams that actually need to rack up points a little bit. And then we have an exciting weekend coming up. We had a really good round, despite there not being as many standout fixtures. So... This Serie A season is really an exciting one so far. And, you know, given that Serie A had a recent resurgence, that's very good for the league overall. And, you know, maybe we get an absolute surprise champion in Atalanta, although I do not quite see it. Any case, let me know your thoughts on Serie A this weekend or how you see the league panning out going forward. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I'll talk to you soon about more things in my Serie A universe. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!